Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Tina Brock and I am the course director for the new Bachelor of Pharmacy Honors Master of Pharmacy course at Monash University. And I'm really excited to have you here with us uh, on our first ever webinar. We are technology pioneers and so we, um, we're trying out this new method to see if we can reach out to some of, uh, some of our interested parties who may not be able to come and visit with us. So first off, some Zoom guidelines. We're using this new technology and we hope it will help to improve your user experience. I'm not going to read these um, out to you, but I'm going to leave it on the slide just for a moment. So if you're having any challenges, uh, hopefully this will tell you uh, what you can do to make that experience better. So just to test uh, the technology today, can you please click on raise hand function now if you can hear us? Are you seeing raised hands? No one has problems yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have not had any raised hands. I see 16. You see 16. I see zero. I try this again. Mm. Okay. So you can just tell me. Is everybody's um, hand raised? 16. But no one said they've got problems. Okay. So I should be good. So it sounds like we have about 16 people who've raised their hand. I think there are a bit few more of you on the call. If you can hear us please click the raise hand function. It's 18, but it's okay. Okay. Um, if you are having trouble, if you can please, in the chat area, post a note to our webinar host and she will try to troubleshoot and help you. And if you have questions along the way, we have a, we have a nice group of panelists. We have a, one of our lecturers. We have a current student. We have a, an alumnus with us today. And if you can type your questions in the Q&A box, then when we get to the panel discussion, we'll make sure to get those answered. So our session today, we're going to talk a bit about why, why choose Monash for your studies and why study pharmacy in particular, and even better, why study pharmacy at Monash. We're going to tell you a little bit about the course format. We're going to give you a sample lesson, something that you might experience if you're a student here, and have a chat with one of our current students, um, one of our alumni, and then have that Q&A. If there are specific questions that you have about your eligibility for the course, Please, um, please reserve those. We'll give you some, some specific information about how to contact us later. For the purposes of this webinar, we're going to talk very holistically about the course. Okay, let's get started. So why study at Monash? Monash is um, an internationally known university. Um, we, we are known for our leadership in teaching, in service, and in research. And we have some of the most innovative learning spaces and technologies um, in, in the educational arena. In fact, I only recently moved to Monash from San Francisco in the U.S. You might notice I have a non-Australian accent. But one of the first places that I encountered Monash staff was at international professional meetings where I learned about some of the amazing um, technologies. We also have a really strong sense of community. And as you'll see um, from these images, our learning spaces are designed to, to prioritize our, our um, students and instructors working together. Um, we're located at the Parkville campus, 
uh, Monash, and this is a single profession campus, so it's only pharmacy, pharmaceutical sciences, and our various postgraduate and PhD programs. But it's a really lovely um, campus and a place to study. We call it, it's not, um, the reason why the, the neighborhood is called Parkville is we're surrounded by lush green parks. It's currently autumn here in um, Melbourne, and so our trees are gold and red, and um, it's, a, it's a really beautiful place uh, to study and quite nurturing. Panel, would you like to add anything about um, what, what it's like to study at the Parkville campus or work at the Parkville campus? I'll start probably. Um, I moved from Malaysia as well in October, so I'm still fairly new like Tina. Um, Parkville's great. I think it's convenient. It's close to the city. Um, there's a lot of student activities going on. There's a lot of parks that so some of us go running after work, which is great. Um, maybe Erica can add a student experience. Um, yeah, I was going to say as well, it's really close to the city, which is great. Um, and it's also close to Brunswick and, the, and Ligon Street, and there's lots of cafes and events that go on around here. So Lots of good coffee, which is what Melbourne's all about. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic coffee, and we're uh, we, we, it's a little bit of a cheeky joke, but we're not that far from the zoo. <laughs> so again, this image is designed to show you that you know Melbourne is truly an international city. People from all over the world. There's music festivals and art and theater, and it's really just an amazing place to work, to live, and to study. So. Tonight's webinar, we're going to speak specifically about the pharmacy course. Um, and But if you're interested in the pharmaceutical sciences course, our other undergraduate offering, we actually have a webinar scheduled about that for tomorrow night. So please do, um, at the end of the session, let us know and we can provide you with that information. But today we'll be specifically talking about pharmacy and your um, panelists are all pharmacists or, or pharmacists in training. So why study pharmacy? Well, pharmacy is a real degree of opportunity because anywhere there are medicines, there are pharmacists. And this is something when I was a, a young student, I really didn't realize that how many places had pharmacists. This uh, photo is a picture of some of our alumni from Monash who work in a variety of fields um, for the pharmaceutical industry, in hospitals, in various patient-facing roles, and medicines information, and even for NGOs globally and worldwide. All of these um, amazing folks started their career uh, in pharmacy schools. Now, probably the most common um, career field for pharmacy that you may 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 think of is um, as a community pharmacist. And community pharmacists are absolutely critically uh, important healthcare providers. They're very accessible to others and uh, have a really exciting role um, in medicines in providing medicines information to the public. I've chosen just a few images to show you um, where pharmacists had a really important impact. This is recently, this image is from a recent um, epidemic, which was called thunderstorm asthma, where um, more than 200 people in the Victoria area alone were seeking help for their respiratory problems. They were having trouble breathing and going to community pharmacies. Um, to, for, for help with this. And this was something not only that pharmacists identified as an, as an issue, so many people were coming, but were able to uh, triage people who needed more uh, intensive care to other healthcare services while treating most. Um, if you live in Australia, you may, uh, you may be familiar with the idea of spider bites. Panelists, I don't know how you feel about that. <laughs> don't like spiders. <laughs> <laughs> we don't like spiders, but, but they're, they're part of our existence. This is a story of a, a young boy who went to put on his, um, his tennis shoes, and there was a spider in this tennis shoe. shoe. It was a deadly spider, and his parents, as you can see, uh, they, they 
wrapped him up and took him right to the closest after hours chemist, the community pharmacy, because the GP clinic was shut and the pharmacist there helped to make to call the paramedics and get this uh, this young child to the appropriate level of care, keep the parents calm, and they had a, a you know, the child lived to, to tell the story, the exciting story of a spider bite. A relatively new area for pharmacists is uh, vaccinations. And there are more than 300,000 uh, certified vaccine, pharmacist vaccine providers in the world. And this is truly an emerging area in, um, in Australia. Just this year, pharmacists um, in Victoria have been able to get certified to provide vaccines like flu vaccine. And um, I'm actually going to, we have, we're fortunate to have a person who is really important in that process, uh, Nick Wilson, one of our panelists here today. Could we zoom over to Nick really quick and see if he wanted to say anything about this? Yeah, well, um, vaccination for pharmacists is a new field. Um, it's really exciting. It's a great way we can engage. Um, it's something we can do on the spot. And it's a really vital service. And I think it's really going to improve vaccination rates across Australia. Um, which are too low. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a, an amazing opportunity for pharmacy to, to show our worth and show how important we are in the community health space. Thank you, Nick. And as we said, um, this is an emerging area for pharmacy practitioners and something that we're looking to bring into the course itself. So Erica, don't, don't relax too much. <laughs> you may be the person providing that immunization pretty quickly. And finally, um, when we think about global health problems, pharmacists are, um, you know, really critical in the use of antibiotics and anti-infectives, and this occurs here, not only here in Australia, but actually also worldwide. And many governmental agencies are really counting on and relying on pharmacists to play this role as what we call antibiotic stewards, to make sure that we're able to use antibiotics effectively for many years to come. So, we talked about why study at Monash and why study pharmacy. Why study pharmacy here with us at Monash? Um, this bright green slide is here to show you that uh, we are absolutely a top tier program. In fact, in no matter which type of measurement you use, you'll find us in at least in the top 10. And we were really proud of our worldwide ranking as number two in pharmacology and pharmacy worldwide. The only institution that ranked higher than us was Harvard, and they don't have a pharmacy school. They only have a pharmacology program. So we're quite proud uh, of, um, of our rankings, but we also are quite, quite humble about it. And we know that we're part of making healthcare better worldwide and um, excited about having the talent to do that. So I thought I'd tell you a few key features of our new course. This is our new Bachelor of Pharmacy Honors Master of Pharmacy Vertical Integrated Masters. It's a double degree and it's just launched this year. So we have one cohort of students who are participating in it. And um, you may think, wait, why did we, if we're, if we're so highly ranked and doing such a, an amazing job, why have we uh, decided to change the course? And it's not because what we were doing previously is, is wrong or is it bad, but it's because healthcare is not good enough. And if healthcare is not good enough, uh, shouldn't we be part of making that better? So if you look at the center of this circle, you'll see the real why we made those changes. And I'll talk to you about a few key features of how we're making those changes and then what our students are studying. It looks something like this. Why we're changing is to improve health and healthcare. And we're doing that through a very innovative curricular model that includes things like skills coaching, um, early and enhanced experiential, a personalized learning plan, teaching our students reflective practice from the very beginning, and a really unique um, classroom model that we hold very dear to us because it's called Discover, and that's in preparatory and pre-learning, Explore through interactive lectures, Apply through workshops, and Reflect, and, learn, and learning more about how we're learning. On the outside ring of the circle, you can see some of the, the key units and um, uh, units, unit names in our course as well. Um, 
for our course, it's more than just biology, chemistry, and math. Biology, chemistry, and math are certainly very important, but we're really focusing on skills development, and we have eight core skills in the program. We call this Power It, Inc. for problem solving, oral communication, written communication, empathy, reflective practice, integrity, teamwork, and inquiry. And coincidentally, or not, these are the exact skills that um, many people feel are absent or lacking in healthcare today. So we want to make sure our students get a full exposure and a chance to develop over the years that they're with us in these eight core skills. And you'll see from this image, this is one of our skills coaching groups. It's actually Dr. Vivian Mack's group, and they're having a, a fun, cheeky photo to, to talk about the, the, uh, the launch of their new skills training. Actually, I'm going to go back. Erica, would you like to say anything about the skills coaching session or our emphasis on skills development? Um, yes, yeah, so we meet with the skills group of the skills coach once a fortnight, and um, it also before each meeting we um, do a reflection on how we've improved one of the skills. So it's been really helpful in tracking our progress, um, and it's also been good to interact with um, the other peers in the group and hear from their experiences and just reflect on our progress. Yeah. Thank you very much, Erica. It sounds like what you're saying is, although it's a large cohort of about 200 people, you do get a lot of um, direct instruction and working uh, closely with academic staff. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Another key feature of our program is we, we uh, use a lot of learning technologies. And uh, as I mentioned before, the, uh, some of these are actually tools that were developed right here at Monash and that we've shared widely with other programs around the world. <laughs> so we have a learning uh, management system, and that's called Moodle, and even though it's a very funny name, <laughs> Moodle, um, that's sort of the place that our students go to, to access all their instructional materials. And they can do this from home, they can do it in the cafe, they can do it from the library, or right here in the classroom. We've developed a tool called Farm Map, and that's the way that our students will begin to see the connection between what they're learning now in first year and ultimately what they need to know in fourth year. Um, we, the, the personalized learning plan system is called My Farm, and that's what Erica spoke about earlier, how she documents her reflection on her development and one of the skills, and how, um, as a skills coach, I can give her feedback about that. And a couple of um, tools that we use in the classroom, in particular, Pharmatopia, where we learn, um, do some laboratory activities, Farmville, learning about a health community, and last but not least, My Dispense, our simulated. Um, community pharmacy dispensing program where we can elicit information from patients, uh, virtual patients, and provide them with care. Um, one of the most exciting features of our program is uh, the time you spend on experiential placements, and that's called our STEPS program. So um, one of the things that we w wanted to commit to practice was that we would do early and enhanced actual experiential activity. So our first year students, in first semester, they had a community pharmacy visit. In second semester, they'll go out on a hospital pharmacy visit. And beginning in year two, they'll spend one week, then year three, two weeks, and year four, three weeks experiential placements. And these placements are in hospitals, in community pharmacies, in the pharmaceutical industry, in global health um, or international partnerships, and in research. So there's a lot of opportunity for our students in our program to get hands-on work, working in credentialed workplaces with trained educators who can mentor them to becoming the best pharmacists they can be. This links nicely to their intern year, um, and after that, as they become foundational practitioners, our dream is our, all of our graduates are lifelong learners, and they go on into um, postgraduate training programs. Nick, would you like to talk about any of our postgraduate training programs um, and how those relate perhaps to the course itself? Sure. So um, 
I guess with the new master's program, the fifth year is integrated. Um, now the fifth year is an intern program, uh, which is a full year and it's done either in a community, in a community pharmacy or in a hospital setting, um, supervised by um, other pharmacists and Monash actually got to the effort of training up our, our pharmacists who are teaching those interns so they get a really good experience. Um, so at the end of the intern year they sit in the final exam and which is basically to tell you if you're a qualified pharmacist or not and then going forward from that there's now positions in uh, hospital residencies where they do continued learning um, or you can continue your study with Monash by doing a master's program as well which you can do while you're working as a pharmacist. Excellent. And Nick, it sounds like what you're saying is that last, that intern year, actually, is a, you get paid. You do, you get paid. <laughs> it's, it's when all those four years of hard work have to come together. <laughs> so you find out why everything that you've learned in your four years matters, how it all comes together, yeah. and gets you ready to be a competent pharmacist. Thank you. Um, so, so again, the, the, the integrated master's course, it's Australia's first integrated master of pharmacy. It takes the same amount of time as our previous course, except that you, you um, leave your time with us with actually two degrees, both a bachelor's and a master's. Your fifth year includes that paid internship that Nick talked about, so you are earning a salary. And we do have an option for international students who do not want to complete their internship in Australia to conclude the course after year four which with the bachelor's in pharmacy. Um, we also have a graduate entry pathway, which I won't focus much of our webinar on today, but we do have um, students who've previously completed um, specific types of science-based degrees who enter in the course at year three. And some, I have a link here to talk with you about um, whether you're eligible or not for our course, and this is what uh, some more information that you can find there. We also have various scholarships and bursaries and, and types of um, uh, ways of supporting our students financially while they're here as part of the course, and this is uh, an image from our recent prize giving night where we recognize some of these scholarship recipients. You can see they come from all over the world. So, um, as the next part of our session, what I thought I would do is turn it over to one of our uh, exciting lecturers, Dr. Vivian Mack, and what she could show you is an example of a small taster lecture, interactive lecture, from that one of our first year students would have actually experienced this year. We talked about um, that, that we have a skills focus, and so this is an opportunity for you to see how our students learn these skills as part of the course. So with that, I'll turn it over to you, Vivian. Thank you. Um, just a bit of a background about myself. I'm actually an Australian pharmacy graduate. Um, I'm registered here in Australia, but I'm also registered in Malaysia as a pharmacist. So um, with an Australian pharmacy degree, you can actually work in a lot of countries if it's recognized. So I'm originally, well not originally, I'm still Malaysian. I am Malaysian. <laughs> um, I've been here for about 10, 12 years, but I've also worked back in Malaysia the last few years. Um, so this is really just a taste of what a lecture would be. Erica has actually had the opportunity to mm -hmm. be at one of my lectures. Um, about basics of nonverbal communication. So why is communication so important as a pharmacist? Um, so at the end of this taste lecture, you should be able to describe and give examples of nonverbal communication, um, and also describe the importance of nonverbal communication in a pharmacy context. So why is it important as a pharmacist to be good communicators? I think Tina highlighted a slide as one of the skills. Oral communication is important because we do talk to patients and also other healthcare professionals a lot about. Um, the use of a patient's medication to ensure that they do use the medication safely, effectively, and appropriately. So we do have a important role to ensure that they do um, use the medications appropriately and manage their health as well. <clears throat> so we talked about communication. A lot of times we think about communication as something that we verbalize to someone else. So um, coming to a pharmacy program for me maybe 12 years ago thinking, I'm, I think I'm a pretty good communicator. Why do I need to learn communication as a pharmacist? But it's actually quite different. Um, and one of it is about nonverbal communication. We think about communication as talking to someone, um, but facial expressions, the way we um, express ourselves, 
um, is also very important. Uh, so there are three things I want to three elements I want to highlight today, which is kinetics, uh, proxemics, and environment. Kinetics is about body movement. So we always, you know, students like Erica always say I'm very expressive. I do show a lot of uh, facial expressions in classes, um, and sometimes they might think you know, I'm happy, I'm angry, I'm upset just by looking at my facial expression. Um, and I think that's very important when we do look at patients is to observe the facial expressions, whether or not they understood what you've taught them um, about taking the medication. Um, whether they seemed um, unhappy about something or if they seem uncomfortable about a situation. Um, but good kinesics is also about the way you express your um, body movements, um, eye contact. So if you do, patients like to know that you are paying attention to them, so you want to give good eye contact to the patients. Um, the next element is about proxemics, so about distance um, and a good use of space. A lot of times you want to be close to the patient um, and close enough that you can talk about some private matters. Um, there might be conditions where the patients are feeling a bit sensitive about. For example, they might have diarrhea and they don't want the entire pharmacy to hear about it. So you want to be close enough to them, but at the same time not so close that you uh, invade their personal space. And you will notice that by their um, expression of non-verbal communication, so they might step back a little. Um, if that's the case, you do not want to go closer to them um, and sort of um, respect their personal space. So these things you will learn over time, uh, but it's important to know that um, it's not just about verbal communication. The final element of non-verbal communication is an environment. So some of you may be from Australia, some of you who have joined in are from um, different countries. So you've been to different types of pharmacies and you might find that there are different types of environments in the pharmacy. Some may be very clean, um, some may have good um, lighting, some may not be, and this could be conducive or could be a barrier to you communicating to the patient. Um, a lot of times you've got dispensing counters and it could be a barrier between you and the patient um, because patients want to be closer to you, um, but at the same time, sometimes the barrier could be a good use of space because you can put you know, written communication on the table um, and sit down with the patient to have a good consultation as well. Um, a lot of pharmacies these days have consultation rooms uh, which provide a good private environment um, for patients um, and that could be a good use of um, space um, when you're communicating with patients. So uh, with the new course, we do a lot of like, activities, as Erica might say. Um, in my lectures, I like to give a lot of videos. So the next activity is actually about um, watching a video without any sound. So what we're going to do is watch the following video, try and guess what is happening. So it's a bit of like a charade kind of game. Um, you can take notes or mental notes as you watch on. And um, maybe after this, I might even get the panel to try and guess I think a lot of you haven't watched the video before. Try and guess what's going on in the video, um, and then we'll proceed. So that's a pretty quick short video, about 20 seconds or so, so maybe I'll bring it back to the panel or even if anyone wants to jump in um, from the webinar session if they want to guess what's going on. So Nick, what do you think? <laughs> what's happening right there? I mean, he's in a coffee shop, so I imagine he needs some coffee. Yeah. To me, it looks like he's had enough caffeine already. He's okay. already bouncing off the wall. Yep. But it looks like he wants something cold, maybe a ice coffee. Okay, what makes you think he wants a cold iced coffee? He did this. All right. All right, so a bit of nonverbal body language. Yep. Maybe extra milk, and he wants it big. He wants it big. Erica, anything else? What do you think? Um, yeah, I have seen this before. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm guessing he wants some coffee. Yeah. Um, and yeah, with milk. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Tina, any guesses or? Hmm. I would say, you know what I want to do is hear those words, Beth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what we're going to do next is, okay, keep uh, the answers that you have in mind. Um, we'll watch the video again and, and sort of think about how close were you to guessing what was happening. What's up, my man? Can I get something started for you today? Just say Just 
Sure. Mindy, triple shot, latte. Mindy, triple shot, ice latte. Extra milk? Uh -huh. Right, so I guess Nikki um, kind of guessed it almost closely, um, minus the three extra shots. Um, I think, so the, I, the whole idea of this is, I think all of you did really well in guessing what was going on, but if you do end up guessing inappropriately or, you know, just assuming what the facial expressions were or what the nonverbal um, language is, you can essentially um, take the wrong order in this case. So you might end up taking the wrong order, you might have uh, give, given a hot, you know, small, tea or whatever it was. Um, so in the context of pharmacy, um, it's important to read other people's language accurately because, um, you know, for example, patients nodding could signify that they understood instructions um, and also wrong identification of nonverbal cues in pharmacy could lead to patients not taking their medications appropriately or sort of misunderstanding your instructions. Um, a good example is a patient coming in with a lot of jitters in their, their hands, they're shaking their hands a lot, um, but actually he actually has Parkinson's disease, um, but the pharmacist may have just misunderstood and think he's just being nervous in the pharmacy, but essentially he might have a condition that um, he might not be you know, too proud of. Um, so that's it really, so that's really just a gist of um, what would be in a small lecture um, on non-verbal, and hopefully that gives you an idea of what a pharmacist actually does as well. Back to you, Thank you very much, Viv. As you see, um, as I said, we, we focus on these core skills and we teach them through interactive lectures, so a lot of video, a lot of um, active learning techniques. And then our students practice that uh, in a variety of workshops. So next up, I thought we'd turn it over to our panelists, and I'd ask them just a few questions. So Erica, how about you first? Tell us about your journey from high school to university, and why pharmacy at Monash? Yep, so, um, so I graduated high school last year, I've just completed the first semester of the first year of this course and I struggled quite a bit to decide what career I wanted to pursue and what university degree I wanted to apply for but in year 11 I attended the Monash year 11 inspiration day and I went to the pharmacy workshop there and in that workshop I heard from some current students at the time and I heard about the pharmacy course and the Parkville campus and all of the cool like technologies they have here like Farmville as was mentioned earlier and it all sounded really good. Um, <laughs> so last year I sort of took a look at what my subjects were and it was mainly like biology and chemistry and maths and I knew that I wanted to go to uni and I knew I wanted to um, go into healthcare mm -hmm. And I considered doing medicine or nursing, but um, I wasn't too keen on, I guess, the intimacy of those professions. And my sister's a nurse, and I'd heard some stories from her, and I just didn't think it was for me. Um, and I thought again about pharmacy, and I really want to help people and improve their health. And I find diseases and medicines fascinating, so I applied for pharmacy. And I put Monash as my first preference, partly because of the reputation that appealed to me, but also because uh, my neighbour, she's currently in third year doing pharmaceutical science here at Parkville. And I asked her about um, this campus and she raved and raved about um, the Parkville campus. So um, the other university that offers undergraduate pharmacy is a lot closer to me, but I decided Monash was worth it despite the travel time. And to my surprise, I got a U12 score high enough to get into this degree, so that's how I ended up here. Oh, awesome. Well, I didn't know all of, all of that, <laughs> that story, but we are very glad that you decided to, to make the extra travel distance to be here with us. What's something about the course that might have surprised you so far? Um, probably the focus on non-academic skills. Mm -hmm. Um, as we just heard about in the taster lecture and um, like the problem solving or communication and all of that and that pharmacy is a really patient centred um, profession so yeah. Excellent, excellent. So Nick, 
why don't you tell us a little bit about your journey as a pharmacist? You're an alumnus. You work with us here at yeah. Community Pharmacist. Yeah. What? So, well, I graduated here 10 years ago now. <laughs> We're in an even smaller campus. We've got five buildings now. Back when I went through, we only had three. Um, so, I mean, throughout our course, we did four placements. We did uh, two community place, uh, two hospital placements, a community placement, and a rural placement. Cool. And I found that just loved my community placement. Mm -hmm. So I did a community internship. Um, within 12 months, I was managing the store that I was in. Um, and from there, over the 10 years, I've had quite a varied degree. Um, I've been doing a lot of work with Monash still, so a lot of teaching. I've done medical writing. I sit on an examination panel for the graduates who are ready to qualify. <laughs> so I a final sign up. Um, and the good thing about the pharmacy industry is it's very small. Mm -hmm. And you, you get to know everyone and doors open in unexpected places at all times. I mean, I was looking at the, the alumni that they had up on the screen before. And although none of them are in my E-level, I know all of them through different wow. different avenues. So it's a nice, small industry, um, very well kind of chimes together well. Yeah, so and it's a very nurturing that people know nurturing. each other. People yeah. know each other. It's, yeah. There's always work available. There's always different opportunities. So. so Viv, why don't you tell us a little bit about what subjects um, you, you know, what topics you most enjoy teaching and why? So I teach mostly professional practice. So I like teaching skills-based mm -hmm. lectures like communication. I like the interaction with students. Mm -hmm. um, I like um, the interactivity mm -hmm. that I have with students. I think we've moved past the didactic lecture type style, and um, it's great to have interactions with students. So um, the topics that I really like are, you know, communication, um, teaching them about community pharmacy because I've got experience in community pharmacy. So those are some of the topics that I like. Awesome, Erica. What do you think about um, as a student? Because you know we're. We're asking you guys to engage with us, to talk to us, to, to give presentations in class. Is that scary? How have you adjusted to that? Um, yeah, I would say it was pretty scary at first. I wasn't um, afraid of public speaking coming to this course, but we do oral presentations and workshops so often that you just get used to it, it becomes second nature to you. And a lot of the time you have a group up there with you, so yeah, um, it's really, I think my skills have really grown even in this first semester in oral communication. Have you found it easy to make friends? You're in groups a lot, you do a lot of team-based work, um, you know, what's it been like for you socially? Yeah, it actually has not been um, difficult to make friends. Um, as you said, from the get-go in orientation week, you're put into a group. You're put into groups in workshops, and you can meet people through mutual friends and through clubs and societies that you might join. Um, and everyone's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I found that the, my peers are really like-minded as well, and we just get along well. Yeah. yeah. It's a bit of a nature of the campus as well, yeah, being definitely. quite small. You know, you do get to know each other. It's a bit like a school environment, but then if you're looking for the full university environment, you can just walk down the road to Melbourne Uni and <laughs> hang out there. <laughs> yes, it's often a day that I'll come out of the lecture halls and somebody will be grilling sausages or there will be some sort of bake sale or some sort of student event. And those always make me, you know, I always think it's, you know, it's about, um, it's about the community in which you work. You know, it, it's hard work. It's hard to, to study to be a pharmacist. It's hard to be a pharmacist. But uh, I, I think we have a real strong respect for, for our community that way. So, Viv, what do you think? You know, you work with a, a small group in your skills coaching group. What do they say about studying pharmacy at Monash that you might want to tell um, prospective students? So in my last session with my skills coach, um, skills coaching group, um, I did ask him, is the course what you've expected or is something different? And a lot of them actually did say, you know, they expected something else, uh -huh. but this is actually a lot better than what they expected because I think coming in, they didn't know how the new style of teaching was going to be. And like Erica said, they've actually expressed that they don't notice it much, but now they do notice the skill development, like things like oral communication, um, standing up and talking in front of class is not 
not a big issue because you do it all the time. Um, they didn't notice it in the first two weeks, but after 12 weeks, they did say, look, you know, I feel like I've learned so much more in the 12 weeks and skills than, you know, the past how many years. Yeah. Um, so they've been, they've been pretty good. Um, they enjoy it thoroughly. There's always going to be ups and downs. Right. I mean, it's not all smooth sailing. There's <laughs> um, always going to be challenging times, but they got through it. And yeah. Right. Well, I mean, I think that's part of what we're known for is innovating and trying new things. So not everything we try works, but I think we have, an, a, like I said, that good sense of community that we can pivot or we can make a change when things, when we need some additional instruction or need to approach some things differently. So, yeah. Erica, what do you think about, you know, you chose this university as compared to one closer to you. Um, what do you feel about the size of it, though? Yeah, um, going into Parkville, I was one thing that I was hesitant about was that because it's so small, I thought there wouldn't be any clubs and societies yeah. here to join. Um, but there actually is quite a few, and I've joined two of them. And um, there really is something for everyone, I believe that. And there's enough to keep you busy if you're willing to get involved. And it's actually really good having a small campus size because you see there's that community feel and you see the same people day in, day out, also because of the way the course is structured uh -huh. and you get to know people on a deeper level. Um, and the class sizes are really good to, um, to talk to the facilitators and get a real understanding of the learning outcomes. So it's been good. What, what um, clubs have you decided to join? Um, I've joined Power to Change uh -huh. and the Parkville Games Society. Oh, that yeah. sounds very exciting. Yeah. <laughs> power to change. <laughs> so Nick, um, maybe could you tell us about uh, what it was like for you finding employment after finishing your studies and after finishing your internship? Sure, yeah. So um, I actually got my internship position through a student placement. Ooh. So I did a through placement in a pharmacy and I had a really great time there. I got along very well with the with the other staff there, and I was asked to do my internship there, so I did that, and then it all went well. And at the end, I was offered part time work as a pharmacist straight away, so it was great. I qualified and was straight into work, and I used the next year just to sort of do lots of little part time jobs to understand how all sorts of different pharmacies work. I also made the opportunity to pick one at the beach over summer, which was great. <laughs> so I'd spend, go down to the beach for four days a week. and Someone has to do it. At 5, yeah. 5 o'clock I was at the pharmacy and 5 o'clock I was in the, in the water. Um, so since then it's, it's always been fairly easy to find work. There's always, um, it's quite a young industry, the pharmacy industry, so there's, it's always changing, people are moving around a lot. There's always work available and Pharmacists are always looking to take on young pharmacists, which is great, and help to sort of mould them into really good communicators and better pharmacists. So always lots of work for new graduates. I, you know, Nick, I'm always particularly struck, you know, you had this really positive experience in community pharmacy, but you didn't really stop, stop there. Not that that wouldn't have been enough, but that you actually, um, you know, sought out work to do projects with the Guild, to do projects with Monash. You know, these were areas that you thought, oh, you know what, I can improve the system in which I'm working by, you know, perhaps doing a slightly different role. And I wondered if you're, um, you know, some of your colleagues, people that you might have graduated pharmacy with and everything, did they think that was strange? Did they think that was exciting? Or I think given the nature of the industry, that it is quite small mm -hmm. and uh, people do feel like they can get out and do things. So, you know, I'll have a, you know, I'll be, uh, assessing people in their, in their pharmacy board exams and other experienced pharmacists will say, well, how do I get involved in that? And they do. It's, it's very encompassing and very inviting into all sorts of different roles. And I mean, pharmacy is not a nine to five degree. Uh -huh. You've got that flexibility to work part time and do other pursuits. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you can work nights if you've got kids or yeah. weekends. So you've got the flexibility to take up these other opportunities which come up. Erica, maybe tell us one thing, and you should feel no pressure. You can say whatever you like. Now, what was like one lesson or one um, lecture or workshop that you really that really stuck out to you this year? It's like, wow, that was really great. Um, there's, 
I think the lecture on sensory physiology, mm. I found that really interesting um, to learn about how it's connect all connected to the brain. Uh, but I also enjoyed the cardiovascular lectures as well. Yeah, excellent. So learning a lot more about about how the body works. Yep. <laughs> and then what uh, you and the pharmacist might do with that information. Yeah. Um, how am I doing on time? Let's go to the now. We have There's a few questions a there. A few questions. Let me get back to that one really quickly. About six questions. Let's see. Let's take a few questions. Um, so the first two are fairly specific to an applicant. Um, one about a, a change in course requirements, and we'll provide you with some information about that. Um, for international students, when will we have to decide whether we would like to conclude the course after year four? I actually don't know the exact date, but it, you don't have to make that decision upon matriculation. There is, there is at some point that you would have to do that, and we can follow up and provide you with that information. Um, what is the difference between pharmacy and pharmaceutical sciences in terms of the career outcomes and course details? That's actually a really great question because you might imagine that there is some overlap between the courses themselves. In particular, we have a unit called How Medicines Work. And pharmaceutical sciences, scientists also learn about how medicines work. I would say that while there's overlap in the enabling sciences, the chemistry, the biology, the math that lead up to that, in general, the pharmacy degree is preparing you for a practice-based career. Now, that practice base could be in research, um, but it would likely be applied applied research, so working with patients in a hospital, provide, uh, perhaps studying how medicines work in, in hospitals and in patients, whereas the pharmaceutical sciences um, um, course is specifically designed to do where you would do your placements and your research project in a more foundational drug development, formulation science, medicinal chemistry area. So while there is overlap, I would say if you would like to be a, a, a licensed or registered or qualified pharmacist, you should choose the pharmacy course and the pathway available to you there. And if you if you like the idea, if you're quite certain that you want a research-focused career, you should pick the exciting, exciting and dynamic um, pharmaceutical sciences field. Many of the instructors that teach in the pharmacy course also teach in the pharmaceutical sciences course, so we have some knowledge across them, although the methodologies that we use are a bit different. Um, so, Um, a specific question about the internship program, which we'll, we'll take online, about how to, um, if you're applying through the graduate entry program, we do have support for helping you identify and find internships as part of the course itself. Um, what percentage of our students come out of the course that go into community pharmacy as a, compared to hospitals? Is there a wide Sorry, it's moving. Well, I'm just, is it widespread or is it competitive to get to hospitals? I would say that a majority of our graduates, and this is a brand new course, so I'm, I'm giving you details about <laughs> previous years' graduates. Uh, the majority of our students go into community pharmacy, although a higher percentage of our graduates go into hospital practice as compared to other pharmacy programs in Australia. It is quite competitive to get into uh, in hospital, and well, internships in general are competitive. It is competitive to get into um, hospital internships. However, um, you know, we, we provide a lot of support and nurturing um, to help students compete very favorably for those types of positions. So, there, yeah. yeah, there's roughly 85 positions yeah. across the hospitals in Victoria. Um, we just split across, obviously, all the graduates. Um, but a lot of pharmacists in Victoria will travel as well if they're really keen on a hospital position. Um, so it's definitely very achievable to get yeah. in. Great. Um, let's see. Sorry, moved up. Um, uh, 
Yes, some more um, questions from international applicants looking at their eligibility for the course, and we'll we'll take those offline. Um, I mean, year 12 currently comp completed biology last year, which I loved. I'm quite worried about my chemistry as I'm struggling, and it makes up a fair bit of pharmacy. Is there extra support available for students? Um, it's, you know, it's, it's actually really interesting. Um, the majority of our students have done chemistry and not all have done biology. Um, and, and so it's always what you haven't done that seems a little bit scary and new. Uh, we do have some refresher modules to help students uh, prepare for both the chemistry and the biology of the course. And we launch those um, in the, the summer before you start the course. So there's some top up. Um, activity that you can participate in, and we also have some um, tutoring and uh, peer support models that are available. Erica, can you think of anything else that might be um, advice for a student who, who's not so sure about the chemistry part? Um, yeah, so I was going to say about the tutoring, we have the PASS classes, which is peer assisted study sessions, and that's from people in higher year levels who um, go through questions with you and help you with answering them. Um, and throughout the semester, if you have questions, you can seek out your lectures and things on the online discussion board. Mm -hmm. You can also use your peers. So there are ways to get help if you're struggling. Yeah, I forgot about that too. We actually have a, um, a we have each, each unit would have a discussion board where students can post questions and get responses from peers as well as from, from their academic staff members as well. I would say, uh, as a person myself, I came pretty naturally to biology and, and found chemistry challenging but deserving of my time. And I ultimately was able to, um, to, to you know, be successful in pharmacy um, with that. I, I probably studied a bit harder and struggled a bit at the beginning, but when I got those concepts, concepts they really stuck for me. Um, what percentage of our cohort are, are rural, a very difficult word for me to say, <laughs> rural or interstate? Actually, I don't know the exact statistics on that. Rachel, would you have access to those? Not instantly. It, yeah, not instantly. We, I, I, I used to that. Yeah, we, we can, you know, we definitely have uh, rural students who are part of the program. Um, and I encounter them all the time in my teaching and, and some from interstate as well. But we'll, we'll follow up with that question um, by text with some more information. Uh, do pharmacists get paid as well as doctors? Um, that's actually, that's a very interesting question. Uh, some of it depends upon where you work and where you live. I find that um, the, the, the wage of a pharmacist is, I feel, a quite fair wage as compared to the amount of um, instruction that you have to do to become a pharmacist. I suspect that um, regardless of which country that you live in, uh, physicians possibly make m more. Um, however, um, I, again, in most cases they've had to complete additional training as well to get to get this degree. I work with um, a variety of pharmacists and, and know many pharmacists in community, in hospital, in academia, in the industry. And um, while I guess no one would say more money would not, wouldn't be nice, I, I feel that, that people have a, a nice standard of living um, based, on, um, based on the salary that they make. Nick, would you have any comments on that? Yeah, I mean, General um, physicians are the highest paid occupation in Australia. It's no surprise that farmers are below that. Um, but you can still, you can earn a comfortable wage. Yeah. People yeah. have families, have a vacation, yeah. uh, you know, drive a car. It seems like it's, you know, a fair wage. Yeah. Okay, so after five years, do you become a registered pharmacist or is there further study that has to be undertaken? So um, the response there is for Australia. Uh, for Australian practice, you would complete your B Farm at year four, and you would complete that internship and the master's component of that at year five, and then you would um, sit a registration exam as part of that. And from that point on, you are you are an entry level pharmacist, so you're licensed and registered to become a pharmacist. 
healthcare in general is a field of lifelong learning. And so what we often see is after perhaps a year or so, pharmacists come back and seek to perhaps specialize in an area. Or, um, you know, we have community pharmacists who might choose to study wound care in particular. Or you might have a hospital pharmacist who would like to study um, to get a master's in uh, clinical pharmacy or specialize in infectious diseases or things like that. So while it's not compulsory that you would go on for additional training, you will find that many pharmacists will choose to do that um, within a few years after completing their initial study. Roughly how many contact hours are there in the first year? Hmm. Um, there are a variety. We, we actually ask our students to treat the course like a full-time job. And um, the, the course, in general, for every six credit point unit, you'll spend two hours in preparation, two hours in interactive lecture, two hours in workshop. And for the, over the course of the week, we would expect you to spend about two hours on reflective activities. Uh, I think, in general, the format of the course has been something that almost all students have responded really positively about. You tend to have a very set schedule, so you know when your lectures are in advance, when your workshops are. You do have um, a, a feature of the first year course is they tend to have a, an entire day dedicated to um, both discovery, so preparatory work, and reflective time. Erica, is there anything that you'd like, about how much time would you say you spend on in a given week? Uh, yeah, um, you'd be spending about um, nine till three, um, four days a week. Mm -hmm. I'd be at uni, and then um, yeah, we'd have the day for a lot of discovery um, pre-learning to do. So it is like a full-time job. There's a lot of there's a lot of stuff. There's yeah. a lot of work to do. But there, it's not that there's no breaks. I mean, you know, yeah. that you do get to have some lunch and have, yeah. and have a coffee. <laughs> no, and yeah, that's, that's, that's been breaks in between. But yeah. Um, yeah. that's just when I would be at uni. Like I'm not going to go home in between lectures. Yeah. Or yeah. yeah, yeah. And Eric, do you do most of your study here on campus, or do you tend to, to go home and do your discovery and reflective activities there? Uh, most at home, but if um, I have a, lo a large break um, and I've like had lunch or something, then I might um, study in the break. And the library here is really great, so okay. I've been, I go go in there on occasion. So a little bit of both. Yeah. Okay. Are there a lot of oral presentations? I'm worried because someone I'm someone who can't speak in front of a group of people quite comfortably. I would say there are a lot of oral presentations, and these are mainly to get you ready for communicating with patients and other healthcare providers. However, I would also say that we, um, it's something that grows over time. I, I would say many of the students that I worked with at the very beginning were quite nervous about that. And it was something that we knew, um, you know, they expressed to us. By the end of the, even the first semester, almost every student who had said, I really, you know, in their reflections, they said, I was really nervous, I was about to faint, I was so scared, said, wow, I didn't even realize it, but it became, you know, I, now I don't dread those presentations as much. Erica, I don't know how, how you feel in that spectrum, but you probably talked to people who were quite nervous. Yeah, and um, just remember that a lot of people probably feel the same way as you do. A lot of people are nervous, especially in the first few weeks doing oral presentations and workshops, but as you said, the skills grow over time and um, you do it so often it becomes like second nature. So, And it's a really good thing to, I had a, a student who told me, he said, I challenged myself so I could, you know, I, I knew I was, I, I would, that I was scared about it, but I really challenged myself and now I conquered my fear. And imagine how, um, how, how what a good experience that was. So we just have a few more minutes. Um, I'm just going to take a few a quick more questions. One, you mentioned small class sizes, how many students in a typical class. So in a large group session, there's just under 200, so somewhere about 190. Um, in a workshop session, you would probably be divided into groups of anywhere from 20 to 40. And you're in a skills coaching session uh, with a mentor with anywhere from 8 to 10. 
so it's quite a variety there. Um, but the, I would even say the large group sessions are quite interactive. They can have a small group feel to them, despite the fact that there's so many people in the room. Um, some questions about graduate entry pathway, and we'll definitely um, provide some more information about that. Um, and some more information about prior study and how, how prior study transfers in. We'll take those questions offline. Let me see. Um, contact hours typical week look like. I think we've answered that. Um, is there a site which provides an overview of the subjects over the period of the course? Yes, there's a summary course handbook that you can find that information and we can provide that link to you. Um, uh, who are in charge uh, to send all my educational details? We can provide some information about that. How large is the lecture going to be in terms of cohorts? Somewhere about 190. And is it hard to find your way around the campus? <laughs> I'll say no. <laughs> that, that one I can say a definitive no. It's a quite small, um, comforting size of campus. Maybe the first you know, few days are slightly awkward, but mostly you can just ask anyone. I still actually do that. I, I occasionally will, somebody will tell me a meeting room and I've not been there before and I'll just ask somebody. I'll say, hey, do you know where that is? I think you'll find it quite friendly. Oh, and maybe this is a good last question. Are there any exchange opportunities uh, to Monash partnership campuses for pharmacy? Would you recommend this or due to no interruptions in the course? One of the really cool features of our program is we have something called a, a farm alliance and we specifically work with um, uh, programs in the U.S., University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, and in the U.K., University College London. And each year we have exchange processes where students can go to UNC or to London and their students come to us and it's built into part of the it's, it's something that you know, not all students will want to do that but we want to make that available for students who do want to do that. We think there's a lot to be um, learned from that exchange process. Some of our Malaysian students actually transfer into the course here. We They find that to be um, quite an exciting opportunity. I think if you come to a school like uh, a campus like um, a university like Monash, um, it's really, that's something that we want to be able to make available to you, the idea that you will interact with people all over the world. Um, so just uh, for those of you that I didn't get to your questions online, we have them um, uh, documented here and we'll pro follow up with you via text with um, some specifics. Uh, specific links and for more information to connect you with folks that look at our eligibility. I'd like to thank you guys all for, for dialing in and thank you for asking some great questions. I want to thank my panelists, my alumnus, my students, and my lecturer who uh, gave up their evening to be with you tonight. Uh, you know, I think it speaks, it speaks really well of Erica that she was able to give up some of her break time to be with us and I think that says that pharmacy students in general are very positive about the course. Um, thank you very much, and if you have additional questions, here are the websites to link that to. If you do have questions about pharmaceutical sciences, please feel free to register and uh, log in for the webinar about that tomorrow night. Thank you very much.